What's up guys, Matacaster here, and today we are back in Car Mechanic Simulator 2021, and I figure, hey, let's just head straight for the junkyard, or eh, maybe we do an auction. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, junkyard sounds like more fun. Let's head to the junkyard and see what we can find. Guys, I hope you're doing well. I'm doing great. Can't complain at all, and I hope you guys are doing just the same. And here we have arrived. Maybe still black screen. There we go, <laughs> here at the junkyard to see what we find. All right, I see a Porsche, Porsche of some sort. What do we have here? It looks like a 911. Let's get around here, maybe check it from here. Let's see, we have a Porsche 911, 1973. I love that livery right there. The Carrera logo across the bottom. That is pretty cool. The price is affordable. It's not bad, really. 25,846 with a buying commission of 1,230 bucks. Gorgeous car. I do love these older Carreras. I really do. Well, I love all Carrera 911. Porsche 911s. They're just, they're just incredible cars. No matter the year, in my opinion. So scouring this whole junkyard, there's literally just uh, this, this F-150, which is not bad. It's a 2013 F-150. I know there's a... Uh, Raptor version, which I'm probably going to be more on the lookout for. And then that um, 911 Carrera. I think we know who's going to be our date to the dance. And it's going to, they put it up there on a pedestal for a reason. Look at it. I mean, it's just sitting up there waiting for us. It's like they knew. We're going to take this 911 home and get this thing back on the road. I mean, there's not a lot left. But that's what's going to make, let's see what. Or do, yeah, <laughs> we've got an engine block and head studs and some pistons sticking out. How about that? At least they're there, right? Yeah, nothing, nothing much left elsewhere, but hey, that's what we're here to do. We're going to get these things back on the road. The price is fair. The car is gorgeous. I love these early 70s 911s. Yes. Buy price, 25. Yeah, very reasonable. Buy the car, except... Take it to the garage. I believe our 911 has arrived and, oh yeah, I still got the, <laughs> I still got the uh, Richard Petty uh, Roadrunner out here. Hey, that's gonna be like our, our shop, you know, it'll bring attention to the shop, right? Having this here, but here we go on our 911 Porsche. I'm not sure what's going on here with, uh, there's like some interesting paint, something going on here. And then we've got this interesting thing on the back here. Maybe when we wash it, we'll figure out what's going on under here. We don't even have all four wheels. We've got uh, blocks there. But anyways, let's get it over there and wash it and kind of get an idea of what we're working with here. It looks rough. It looks really, really rough. Probably one of the rougher ones we've ever started out with, but hey, that's what makes it fun, right? Clean this thing off. Yeah, if we were starting with pretty cars, that wouldn't, oh, it looks like it's some got some kind of racing livery on it. Yeah, there's definitely something there. This might be some historic type of race, race 911. It'll definitely help once we get the welder to it to clean up some of the rust and stuff. So with that being said, let's move the car over to car lifter A and find out what we're working with. Oh, here we go. We fire up our welder. It's gonna cost us 3,500 bucks. Which is interesting, because if we already own the welder, but whatever. So we can see, no, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. What is this? Do you guys know? Put it in the comments if you know already, right off the bat. I am interested. Okay, let's move this back. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's some very important Grand Prix car or some sort of GT car, something that I'm just not familiar with. It's gorgeous either way. It's worth mentioning for sure. This is another one of the amazing mods by Pain slash Deadbod777. Always builds some of the best mods. Some of pretty much my favorite mods. Um, if you want to support him, check out the link in the description to his Patreon. He does not pay me or ask me to mention any of that. I just, I just always want to pay it forward with him because these mods are absolutely incredible. And part of the reason that this game is so much fun is because he does such good work with these. Let's get this rear drive axle out that way we can get the drive line out of here. 
Jump over here to the transaxle. Out of there. Oh, we've got three stuck bolts. That's one nice thing about the Porsches, Volkswagen, Porsches and Volkswagens. It's all so simple. Get the clutch release bearing out of here, as well as the clutch pressure plate. A lot of stuck bolts. Yeah, this thing has been very neglected. That's for sure. Now we can get those out of here. I think we'll be ready to pull this engine out once we remove the clutch plate and the flywheel. This is going to be a fun car. What amazes me is this engine still had oil. A little bit, just a tiny little dribble. And we can move that back where it is. The big question will be, does the cherry picker know to go to the front or the back? Does it know to go to the back or will it go to the front to pull this engine out of here? Let's grab this, move the equipment over to car lifter A. And, oh, it knows to go to the back. Very nice. All right, let's pull the engine out and see what we're working with. There was not a lot left, it looked like. We'll put it on the old engine stand here. There we go. Yep, that's the one we want. Yeah, it's just very, very little left of the six cylinder Porsche. Nice. All right, let's pull this thing apart. I have not pulled one of these apart yet in Car Mechanic Simulator. I have not done any boxer engines in any of the car mechanic simulator games whatsoever. So this is going to be kind of an adventure for me. That just pretty much opened everything up, which is very nice, quite handy. And then can we just pull in? Okay. Oh, we can pull the rod caps. Okay. I see the opposing side rod caps. That makes sense. Got one there, one there. Yeah. These pistons look terrible. Absolutely shot. And are they just the regular? I wonder if they're just the regular piston with con yeah, piston with Conrad. Okay, so that carries over. So now we can pull these pistons out of here. One, two, and three. Then how do we get these other ones out of here? We're gonna learn together on this one. Maybe crankshaft bearing. That's the only thing that's letting me pull out of here. We've got the crankshaft bearing, that one. Let's sneak in here, grab this one. That comes right out. There's a third right there. Then can we remove, yeah, there we go. We can remove that block. And then we've just got a floating uh, crankshaft and pistons. Interesting. But at least we can now get to the rod caps. It's gonna make for an in interesting rebuild. Cause I've never quite seen a, <laughs> seen it done like this. Okay, pull this apart and get this last rod cap off. Spray that one. Then we should be able to remove the pistons right there, right there and right there. Now we can remove the crankshaft and go to repair what we can and replace what we can't. I'll do a couple here, grab it there, there. And you guys know how this goes. This is going to go on for quite a while. So we will skip all of this. Here we are with rebuilding the engine. I've got uh, one half of the side block thing engine block a uh mounted and then i mounted our performance pistons and the uh yeah the rod caps along with the piston rings so we are ready to start installing the rest of the stuff for this engine to build this engine out so now we've got this shaft this is cool i've never done a boxer engine on any of my car mechanic simulator videos, let alone even a air cooled boxer engine, which is very cool. I'm, I'm actually excited about this. Uh, went and repaired what I could and bought what I could not. And then I did buy quite a bit of performance, uh, performance parts for it. Didn't go totally crazy, but you'll see there's quite a bit. And then pipe. I'm curious if any of you you guys happen to know what that pipe is for engine head. So these are our performance engine heads here. Very different than the typical engines I've done on here. We've got our third here. Then we put on our camshaft. I'm going to go ahead and take care of these spark plugs before I put on the that big thing that tends to get in the way. The camshaft bearing, they call it spark plug here i have owned a boxer vehicle in real life but it was not air cooled it was a subaru 
Legacy, but I never tore it apart. I never tore the engine apart, I should say. I replaced the head gaskets in it because, well, Subaru, but uh, never... There we go, get to this guy here. Uh, never got into the nitty gritty as far as the engine went. Looks like I got, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five. Did I get all of them? One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, yes, I did. That's the tricky part. This is definitely new to me. <laughs> Just trying to keep up with, uh, especially a six cylinder uh, boxer. So I'm jumping in with both feet, six cylinder, air cooled boxer engine. And I've never messed with it in car mechanic simulator before. So this is, this is exciting for me. Just hope it's not totally boring for you guys, because usually I'll just build out one side of the engine, then hop over and fast forward the other side. But for this one, I'm kind of excited to see how it all comes together. Get that camshaft and then we got the time timing chain there. Oh, then we've got a tensioner, or they call it a timing chain shoe. Keeps tension on the timing chain. Then we got a cover here. Ignition distributor. There we go. There's one rotor performance, another rotor. We get our cap. Another cap there. There wasn't a performance option for these caps. Of course, we got to get these annoying little clips. There we go. There's one, two, three, and four. There we go. Okay, how are we looking on this side? It looks like we've... We are where we need to be, <laughs> at least on that side. Let's get a harmonic balancer installed. Jump over here for this timing chain cover here they're asking for. So yeah, I'm just gonna build out this side. Oh, we got a power steering pump there. Throw that on and there it goes. So yeah, this side will pretty much be everything you saw on the other side. And that looks like everything done on that side, just as we did on the other. And now we've got the engine it's like the little air cool distributor little yeah, what do they call it engine block cover as they call it intake manifold mm, performance version i threw a lot at it as far as performance wise goes and we got performance uh, fuel rail there so this is a fuel injected boxer six very cool with a lot of performance stuff thrown at it so it'll be cool to see what we make over stock horsepower. We got it, our fuel rail here, a blower right there, our throttle right there. They call it throttle. And then our fuel filter. This is all performance stuff here. Air filter cover with a performance air filter. There it is. Then we put on our I call it air filter base. Okay. Then we've got these four little clips. You've always got these little clips. And again, they're ones I have been known to forget. So jump on these immediately. Oh, over here, we got to do the front end here or the front of the engine. I guess it would be the rear, rear front. What would you call it when it's mounted in the back like that? Fan cover and the radiator fan that in there then we should have some belts yep there's one belt number two and there's a third to run the there we go on the power steering pump okay now we've got the ignition wires while we're here let's just uh go ahead and knock out our flywheel we got a performance one of those a performance clutch plate or clutch clutch pressure plate and Throw in our throw bearing while we're right here. Okay. I believe that looks to be complete. Let me see if there's anything highlighted that I missed. All the clips seem to be there. This actually looks pretty cool. This is a pretty cool looking engine. That was fun to do because I had not done one of these yet, as I've already stated. So that was really cool. I dig it. 
and I'm looking forward to doing more because I bought all the uh, Porsche DLC and stuff. So it'll be cool to, to do more of these. And even some of the modern ones would be a lot of fun to do. The water cooled ones would be fun to do. All right. So on to our very rough, rough Porsche. So I figure we move on to the suspension, start pulling that apart and see what we're working with. It should be pretty traditional stuff other than a transaxle type of a setup. So I'll be excited to see what this turns out to be. We'll pull off the wheel entire set here. I'm sure we have disc brakes. Of course we do. Pull that off. Brake, brake pads. Get this, uh, the uh, brake disc off. Wheel hub cap. Get that bearing out of there. The wheel hub. Luckily nothing stuck there. Front axle knuckle cover. Yeah, this is looking pretty traditional. Kind of expected it would be. That one's a little bit stuck. Go ahead and take our front shock assembly out. We can grab our outer tie rod. There we go. Get a decent amount of this is stuck pretty good. And then our inner tie rod. Grab our front sway bar in link. Then it looks like we can grab our lower suspension arm. Stuck fastener there, there. That one's fine. That one comes out good. And then we can pull out our front steering knuckle. And that is pulled apart. Looks like a lot of this back here has already been pulled apart for us. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, figuring out how to rebuild this one. But let's pull apart what we can. Get our brake pads off of here. Brake disc out of the way. Wheel hub. Oh, I was, I was kind of expecting some stuck bolts for this rear axle knuckle cover. And then that is that. All right, guys, that is the suspension torn apart. I will go ahead and pull this apart. You don't have to watch it. I'll see you on the other side. I feel like I'll never stop mentioning how cool I think it is that they added a brake rotor lathe into the game. This is just so cool. Get these old brake rotors back into shape we'll take that one off and throw our next one on yep i just think it's the coolest thing time to move on to the suspension we'll start with the front here mount our front steering knuckle get our upper suspension arm of course with all the rubber bushings as always can't forget those do our bottom suspension arm that mounted and ready for our shock assembly. We'll go with next, there it is, ready to go. All put together, then might as well throw in our steering rack. It'll be handy if we wanna add our tie rods and then our front sway bar with our front sway bar in link. We go on there and then we'll take care of this inner tie rod and our outer, there it is. And then we can take care of our front axle cover, front wheel hub, bolt that in. We should be ready for our bearing. There it is. And then our wheel hub cap and our brake disc that we restored on our lovely <laughs> brake uh, lathe over there. I still think that's, I still get a huge kick out of that. I think that's one of the coolest things they've added to this game. It'd be cool if they added more to that. We'll take care of our wheel and tire later, but it looks like as far as the front suspension goes, that is all taken care of. We've got all our rubber bushings in the K member. Looking good. On to the rear suspension. We will put our, yeah, it's already <laughs> showing just a crankshaft there. We'll put our engine in a little bit. Uh, cause it, this is all going to connect to the transaxle rear axle knuckle cover, throw that in our real rear wheel hub B take care of that. We've got another bearing that needs to go there. And then, Oh, it looks like we leveled up. We leveled up to 16. How about that? Nice little bonus right there. We got our brake uh, caliper on there. That's always nice. Maybe we unlocked a perk or two. 
We'll have to find out. Bottom suspension arm with our rubber bushings there. And the bolts attached and our shock assembly. There it is. Now we can do our upper suspension arm. And it might not be a bad idea just to go ahead and install our engine just so we can connect it to the transaxle. Cause yeah, it doesn't look like we can do a whole lot more. Oh, we need to take care of, yeah, it's, it's not going to let us do a whole lot more until we do our CV shaft here. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Wouldn't hurt. Bring this thing down. Our cherry picker is already there. We've got this beautiful engine ready to go. Might as well take it off the stand. And grab it right there. Carry it <laughs> all the way over. Give it to the cherry picker. Yep, install our engine. Looks like 100%. So this thing can go right back to where it came from. And that looks gorgeous all tucked in there. Quite nice. But we still need to do something about all this uh, rust and whatnot. But now at least we can connect our, our uh, CV shafts to the transaxle. It looks, really, it looks really cool in there. This is fun doing the first uh, first air-cooled engine I've done here. So now we can move forward with connecting everything. Oh, I should probably put the gearbox in. That's going to help a lot. Here we go. There it is. And we were not able to repair this gearbox. So I will need to replace it. And what I'm guessing is with the amount of horsepower or the amount of upgrades I've put at this car. We're probably going to need to just go with the upgraded B6 M64 gearbox. So there we go. Went and grabbed it. Installing it now. So that way we can at least tune the thing if it's out of control. And there we go. That is now installed and we will take care of the wheels and tires here shortly. But other than that, I'll just build out the other side. Replacing the relays and the fuses. We got quite a few relays that were missing, which is fine. It's always nice to replace these anyways, especially on a vehicle this age. And then we've got a few fuses down here. This one, this one, and we've got a type C there. Now we can put our fuse box cover on. We should be good. Battery installed there. Fuel pump, about a performance one. Let's install it here. And now looks like this should be good. Might as well, while we're here, remove our brake. There we go. Brake servo cap to be able to put some uh, brake fluid in there. We do want this car to stop. It's going to be fast. So we want it to stop. So might as well put some brake fluid in there. And there it goes. Well, I went and bought all the body parts that uh, we're in pretty rough shape because I'm still not at the point where I can repair them. I'm getting there though. And uh, when I went there, I went a little crazy and went for a wide body kit. And it actually, I mean, I think it looks pretty good on this. It might be blasphemy on a classic Porsche, but I think uh, for this car, this particular car, it looks pretty good. I love the wide body. It's going to be tricky finding wheel, wheel tire combo, especially for the rear. That might look good, but I think... I'm going to experiment with the front. I think I found a combo that might work because man, I think this really, this really looks good. And when it, once it gets painted, it's going to look much better. Let's go ahead and mount what I bought and balanced. I haven't done this. This is a 245-60R15. So the 15 is kind of keeping with the traditional style. Uh, some pretty tall sidewall, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that looks good for the era. It's tucked in a little bit. But not to the point where it looks ridiculous. We're definitely at... No, I think that looks really good for the fronts. That actually... Yeah, looks really good for the fronts. We're going to have to get pretty aggressive for the rear because look at this. Yeah, that sticks out quite a bit further. But for the fronts, I think this really works. And with the tie, and with the taller sidewall... Yeah, it does definitely kind of fits of the era. This wide body kit is absolutely fitting of the era as well. I think it looks really good. It doesn't look out of place. I definitely want the plaid interior on the doors. I love the plaid interior on these uh, era Porsches. Yeah, I think that looks good. So now we're just gonna have to find a comfortable and a very complimentary uh, set of tire wheel tire combo for the rear. 
So here we're going with a 305.55. I think that might be a good balance for there. We're about to find out. Speaking of balance, uh, take it over here to the balancing. Get these tires balanced. Well, this one looks like it's going to be pretty easy. Indeed it is. That is balanced. The moment of truth. Let's go ahead and balance this. We'll go star pattern. Oh, that one got away from me. Still close enough. Why not? Uh, that looks uh, wimpy. We're going to go. <laughs> going to have to go wider. That's for sure. But we learned. So I had to jump up to 17 inch, which is the front or 15 inch. Uh, 17 inch rims just to get any wider. This is the max at 335s. We'll see how this fits. Uh, if it doesn't look good well then that's going to be tricky because i can't get much wider than this hopefully it looks decent because i want to kind of keep it of the area yeah i could jump up to a much bigger rim oh no that works that that, that actually does work look how much if you can kind of compare the rear to the front and still kind of looks the era oh yeah that definitely works okay yep that's comforting okay i was a little bit worried about that so one thing I'm running into, it keeps telling me that the body is not at 100%. I've pulled everything apart, everything possible. As far as body-wise goes, I keep looking for anything body-wise, and I can't pull anything else off. So I'm confused of what it's telling me because it says I'm not at 100%, even though I've replaced. We can go to my inventory here. All the body stuff is 100%. So don't know if it's a tiny little glitch or it's if it's something tiny that I'm missing but watch this I'll put everything back on and I'll show you okay that is everything that I can see that the body would need yeah anything that's missing would be highlighted and then I jump over here to car status body 95% I'm not gonna get too hung up about it I did get a request on what to paint this car so let's send it over to paint actually let's do uh, the dyno first here we go. We're about to find out what kind of power we made. Factory power is 222 horsepower at 207 foot pound feet of torque. And I think we're gonna make quite a bit more than that. And looks like we did. 346 horsepower, 308 pound feet of torque, which would be great in a car this light. This is going to be a fun little car to drive around. That's for sure. Oh, I found it. I found it. It's just called car part number one. It's the trim around the window. Oh, that was going to drive me nuts. Here we go. This has got to be it. Let's install it. I went with the Chrome. Let's take a look. 100%. <laughs> oh, I feel so much better. I found that while I was trying to assemble the interior. So yeah, let's get back to the interior assemble. Oh man, I feel so much better about that. So that way then we can go on to the test path and get everything situated there. The alignment, headlights, that kind of thing. Yes, let's get this thing going. Figure out everything should be 100%. Yep, 100%. And we can do our alignment, which I know is gonna be way out and it sure is. Let's kind of dial this in there. 100% dialed in, looks good. Headlights weren't too far off done taken care of okay now we can go paint this thing so i had a little bit of a request here is to uh, paint it green with the blue carrera along the bottom and there is actually quite a few blues to choose from which is kind of nice so there is a surprising 47 livery sets for this car 47 <laughs> that's what pain does for us but again i was requested to do a green with a blue along the bottom i think that's exactly what i want to do i'm kind of going for a green of the era i might go a little bit darker just to make it fit that's kind of cool the green with the lighter green that actually looks pretty cool i like the sky blue with this green maybe go a little bit darker on the green there we go kind of that more 70s which this car is uh, greenish with the blue. I think that works well. I really dig it. My only thing is the, the rear tires could go a little bit wider, but that's as wide as I could get with it looking, you know, decent. I mean, I, I could have jumped up to like 19s, but then this would have looked, uh, it would have looked way off and terrible, but it fits, it works. And it's definitely of the era. I think they didn't always have to come all the way out to the end of the, uh, the wide body there back in the day for sure. It definitely fits what it was okay let's check out this 
amazing plaid interior, which works. Look at that green. That works so good. Looks really good out here in the sunlight. Really digging it. Really dig this green. Double check. 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. Everything is good to go. Let's take this car. Where should we dig it? Should we try to uh, top speed run? See what we get out of it? Might as well. And here we are inside of our Porsche 911 Carrera. Let's see what we can do with it. I'm going to lightly get on it. There we go. It's a really cool car. Sounds good. We are up to 173, 174, 180. Which is pretty impressive for a car of this age. 190 and we'll have to shut it down. Oh, uh, luckily we didn't, <laughs> we just barely missed that wall there. Uh, 191. Oh man, this thing is squirrely. Oh, in the best way. Do some nice donuts. Warm these tires up, why not? Yeah, the argument could be made. The rear tires need to stick out a little bit more, but again, that's as far as I could get them out. As far as I could go without it looking absolutely ridiculous. But overall, I dig it. Because even if those older, especially if you look at some of the 80s and 90s wide body stuff, you, you see it a lot in like rally cars and things like that. Uh, Pikes Peak cars, things like that. Uh, they, they didn't always come all the way out. They were a lot like this. They were tucked pretty good on some of those cars. So it definitely fits the era. I think it works. I love it. It's squirrely. It's definitely squirrely. You can have a lot of fun with this. It's kind of got that old school feel. Bounce it off the limiter a little bit there. Uh, let's see if it'll J turn. I'm sure it will. Of course it does. Oh man, it hooks up pretty good. These rear engine, rear wheel drive cars are so much fun. Yeah, this is, this is a fun car, that's for sure. All right, take it back to the garage, see if we made any money on it. Kinda hate to see it go, but you can't keep it all, especially uh, when we wanna start moving up into the more pricier cars. Uh, but yeah, the, everything about this is clean, looks good. That engine, it's all hopped up, ready to go. Not much we would do with this otherwise, unlike this this guy over here, which if you haven't seen that one yet, that's a <laughs> that car is incredible. Again, keeping that out here for, uh, you know, catch attention to our shop here. But for this car, let's see what we've done, see what we can sell it for, all 100%. And here comes the truth. Profit $413,000. That is the biggest profit we've made yet. This is actually absolutely pretty incredible. I was surprised by this. The sell value is $438,854,000. This is definitely going to, uh, we're going to sell it. There it goes right there. This is definitely going to get us up to, yeah, uh, $662,769,000. That's going to get us into a bracket at the auctions to be able to actually, actually some of the junkyards too. I found some Ferraris in there that I couldn't afford. Bugatti, uh, some of those uh, that we're getting closer to be able to afford some of these crazy cars that are going to be a lot of fun to do. And I'm very excited for that guys. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you liked it, prove it by giving me a thumbs up. If you made it this far, I would, Certainly appreciate it if you would. It really helps me out in a lot of ways. And if you uh, want to leave a comment, that helps too, very much. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.